Hi, I'm Alex Archbull, and I've been buying and selling antiques since I was nine years old. From basements to scrapyards, I'll look just about anywhere I can to find lost antiques and collectibles. And sometimes I'll go big and buy everything. With my wife and kids, we run an antique shop in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, filled with some of the most unique items we can find. I never know what's going to happen or who I'm going to meet. This is our life, this is our adventure, and this is Curiosity Inc. From home, honey. Oh, Tuesday morning, bright and early. Um, headed over now to the store. I've got to work my shift over there. Um, it's the first day of construction. <laughs> I, I should be super happy about it, but I'm actually nervous about it um, because I have to get the uh, stakes in place to mark off where all the water lines are going to go, and I got to do that myself. Um, my contractor is helping me build can't make it this morning to measure, so I've got to make sure it's in right. And you can't really move this stuff once you pour the foundation, so. Uh, I, I'm gonna measure like three, four times, but they're gonna be here in like an hour, so I've gotta hustle and get over there, stake these uh, spots out where the water's gonna need to go, and uh, hopefully get it right. Wish me luck. Well, here I am, and as you can see, the ground is pretty much all thawed out. A little bit of snow still left over there, but the important part is the uh, area. I'm just gonna walk over here. The area that we're going to be putting the water lines in is uh, all nice and dry. So I've got to measure and stick stakes in the ground where the pipes are going to go. This is going to be a, a toilet. There's going to be a sink right over there, a drain in the floor over here, and another sink on this side of the wall, which will be kind of where the cafe cleanup and prep area is. So it's up to me now to get this all measured up and make sure I put them in the right spot. Okay, I've got it, the measuring tape down. Toilet's in the right spot, thankfully. <laughs> that, that would have not been great. Um, if I go six foot seven, somebody's mask left over, six foot seven, that's the edge of the wall of the utility room. And we're gonna need a floor drain. And then right in the middle of it, right about here. I'll double check that. So that would be about right. The hot water tank's gonna sit right here. Furnace right there. Yeah, that should be about right. I'll double check the measurements on that. I have to figure out where the sinks are gonna go. Well, I've measured three times now, and I believe I got my distance correct from the wall. So that'd be sink number one in the cafe or air. Toilet, there'd be a wall here obviously, because you don't want to have a, <laughs> a toilet right where you're serving food. Anyway, there's going to be a wall. Toilet, a uh, sink for the washroom, another wall right here, and then we've got the drain in the floor with the hot water tank in the corner. That should do it. Now just to wait for the guys to show up to start uh, digging holes. Well, the guys are here. They're going to start digging the uh, spots for all the new ABS to go. While they're working on that, I think it's nice to know that they've got the plans and they're going to make sure that everything's in the right spot. But while they're doing that, I've got to bring in some boxes because uh, I'm fixing a banjo while they're digging holes. Now, about a week ago, I bought this old Maybell tenor banjo. The uh, It doesn't look like much right now. That's why I'm working on it. The skin of the banjo was destroyed, making it unplayable. Well, at least it wouldn't sound very good. Um, so I dismantled it and I've ordered a replacement skin. Now they sent it in this massive box. Look at that. It looks like a big pita, <laughs> but they sent this little piece of leather inside of this massive giant box, but that's what we're going to be doing has a warning sign on it. Keep away from small children. The film may cling to the nose and mouth and prevent breathing. Boy, I guess kids can choke on anything. Better safe than sorry. Uh, let's see, there's my strings. All right, let's set this aside. And we'll see if we can make a little bit of room to lay the banjo out on. Now I've never upholstered a banjo 
before, of upholstered seats before, I feel like it's gonna be kind of the same premise. Now to get this off in the first place, I had to uh, loosen all of these little uh, bolts on the back here, and then the clamps just basically come off, which hold the banjo, banjo skin in place. That par part was the easy part. Uh, the challenging thing is gonna be stretching this out so it looks nice and even. Um, to do that, we're going to remove the ring. I'm gonna remember that this side is the side that goes up on it uh, because those little clamps have to clamp on there to hold this thing down. So we're gonna set that aside. And when we flip this over, we can see that there's sort of an inner hoop here. And that is just the skin itself. It's just been formed on there for so long that it's formed this permanent crusty lip on there. Um, but they did a good job. Um, so we'll leave that aside as a template. I'll get this out of the plastic, but um, hopefully all will go well. Like I said, never done this before. Today's gonna be the day. Well, first things first, we're gonna get this vellum nice and wet and it's got to be very soft and subtle kind of like if you have a chamois it doesn't really bend much if it's dry so we're gonna get this nice and soaked until it's nice and flexible so we can stretch it you know you're getting it right when it kind of starts getting see-through look how soft that's getting now so i'm going to work a few of these edges and then uh, we should be able to go lay it out to stretch Okay, now I take my softened leather, or my vellum, and I stretch it evenly over top of the uh, hoop, making sure I've got the correct side, smooth side down. We're gonna get that nice and stretched out, nice and even, and then we're gonna put this ring on the inside, which should hold it everything nice and tight. Okay, I've got the skin stretched out and looped through. I'm starting to get the uh, tension hoop on here by doing uh, sort of bolts, kind of like you'd uh, tighten a car tire, doing them one and another across from each other so it's even. Uh, once that's all, all nice and tight, then I'll trim back that uh, excess skin on there. So I've got the new skin on the banjo. It's drying right now. I don't want to put tension on the bridge because it'll leave little indentations. We're going to let that dry. But see all this, I need to trim that back. I only had scissors but you're supposed to take an X-Acto knife and trim all the way around, which I will do later. So if you're looking at it and saying, what a messy job, Alex, don't worry about it. We'll get it fixed up. But very soon I'll be able to tighten this up once the skin dries. It's getting nice, nice tension on there. It's looking pretty good. Todd, I am so sorry. The Eagle Man's here. The Eagle Man has landed and uh, you caught me midway through working on my banjo. I'm subjecting my friends and customers to a special type of hell today as somebody who doesn't know how to play the banjo attempts to tune a banjo. I still don't know what I'm doing, but I do think I'm getting close. It's The important thing is that the tension on the banjo seems good, so I'm going to leave it and walk away and let the professionals take over from here. Things are going well with the banjo repairs. It was not the easiest thing I've had to do, <laughs> but uh, I'll have to bring my X-Acto knife in and fix it up. But it is more or less a banjo again. And I think the guys are just about done outside too. I'll have to run over and check that out. As for the outside, how's it going guys? Looks like there's a bunch of pipes going on over there. So that's your sink going into your prep station? Yep. Toilet. Okay. This is your building vent. This is inside that six inch wall. That's the vent, yeah. Yep. This will be your clean out that gets cut at the floor. It's the building clean out. You have to have one. Floor drain in the bathroom. Okay. This is your sink facing this way. In this yes, bathroom, yep. In the wall. And then your floor drain in your mechanical room with your water line popping up for your hot water tank to sit right over there. And then I can run all my other plumbing off of that everywhere else. Yeah, probably just pin it right to the wall. Well, it's quite the spider web of uh, pipes you've got going for me. I appreciate all that, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, all I gotta do now is start pouring concrete. Yep. But now it's time for a segment I'm going to call Mystery Box Opening. These are our, uh, boxes sent to us by viewers. We have no idea what's inside. This one comes to us from uh, Sandra uh, William. 
hope that I said that right. We're gonna crack this open and see what Sandra sent us. Um, actually had a few mystery boxes, boom, 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 show up today. So I guess we'll open those and uh, see what treasures await. Okay, the box is open. There's a note inside the box. It says, life is a collection of moments. It says, thanks for the moments you share with us. These moments enrich my life and all those you've helped. May you live the life you love, Sandra. Well, thank you, Sandra. Um, let's see what you sent us. First little bag is uh, Quita Peña's doll tradition to remove worries, so Spanish worry dolls. Well, aren't those awfully nice? Let's see, they say, um, Artisan Aura Lopez explains the Mayan worry doll tradition. Uh, and she said, the grandparents said that the way to use them is to take the doll and tell it your problems and fears and place the doll under your pillow. And the next day they will come to life and attack you. No, that's not what it says. The next day your problem becomes smaller and can be resolved. Well, isn't that a lot of burden to put on a tiny little doll? But how cute. I think what we have here is a kit for me to go on my next adventure through a uh, hoarder type house. I've got a respirator mask. Um, she says her granddaughter works for the company that sells these. So clean freaks, there's wipes that said maybe would be good during a hot pick or if you're remodeling something. Uh, and even some moleskin padding to pad the spot where it sits on your nose. So uh, thank you so much. Now I have a little uh, adventure kit. So I guess I'll have to go on another adventure soon here to put all this to good use. The second box comes to us from our friend Bob Pendleton in Washington, who made, uh, made us the uh, really cool cowboy boot birdhouse that we have in our backyard. So let's see what uh, what Robert sent us. So I'll get my scissors out and we'll open this up. Now, when Robert came up last time, he actually visited us pre-COVID. He came to the store. Um, and we saw him in person and he sent us a Washington license plate with the Mariners on it. And... Looks like some old, um, some pellet tins for old Benjamin air rifles. Those are pretty cool. There's a little note for me in here. And it looks like a DVD. A Stephen King white knuckler. What did he send me? Should I worry that I'm going to send horror movies in the mail? Probably not. Robert seems like a nice guy. Oh, and he sent us another cowboy boot. I got to show you guys what he, what he does with these boots. This one actually looks like it's a, it's a skate. Attached to it. Maybe this is made special for our Canadian winters. It's a, uh, <laughs> it's cute. Okay, hang on. I'm going to get this unwrapped. Okay, so our friends over at Hillbilly Birdhouses, Robert has sent us, he's got the New York Rangers plate on the front. He always uses a license plate of some kind on the top, and he's made a birdhouse out of a, of a skate. Uh, luckily, it's not super duper sharp, but how cool is that? So I guess you hang it from your tree and Hopefully a little birdie or somebody comes along and decides to live in that. So thank you very much, Robert. What a cool little gift. I guess I should see what horror movie you sent me too. Well, now I don't know if I should be worried. He sent me Misery and it says number one fan. I'll assume that Robert has a sense of humor and he's not going to capture me and hobble me um, like Kathy Bates did <laughs> to James Caan. Uh, we all know that he eventually escaped and went on to uh, film the movie Elf. But uh, boy, creepy movie about a super fan gone nuts. Let's hope this doesn't come to fruition. Either way, a cool assortment uh, with a little creepy. Robert, I'm gonna have to talk to you about this one. This next parcel comes to us from Australia, uh, from our good friend, the Wrights out there. Um, not sure what they sent me. I got an email from them the other day saying, did you get it? Did you get it? Well, I guess I did today. Uh, so we're gonna crack it open and see what's inside. Um, always kind of curious when these boxes come through because you just never know what you're going to get. What's in the box? Looks like a model kit. Let's see. What is in the box? Let's open this up and have a closer look at it. Okay, before we do anything, there's a note. It says, hi, Alex. I'm Jono. Rhymes with Bono, Canadian guy who's been living in Australia for around 20 years. Found your YouTube channel through your Potter's House series and I've been following your adventures ever since. In fact... You inspired me to do a bit of antique and collectible buying and selling myself. Started with some old hand tools, but now it's my new hobby. And it's taken on a life of its own. I can barely get in my garage these days. Well, I'm sorry to you and your family for that. Um, <laughs> luckily, he says, my wife, Jen, is as understanding and supportive as Melissa. That's, that's important. Uh, anyway, he says, right after I saw that you finally bought your dream jack, I found this vintage model and I want you to have as a gift. It's my way of saying thanks for the inspiration and hours of entertainment. I uh, hope you like it, and the next time we're back in Canada, we'll try to come say hello in person. Well, isn't that nice? 
from Jono and Jen in Australia who sent me a model of my Jag. And how perfect is that? It's even a Series 1, except I'm not a pilot. I'm as happy as those guys, though. My, they could be breaking in, for all I know. But that is so cool. Thank you very, very much. That's going to go home in my display case. Not many things go home, but this certainly will. If you guys don't know by now, I love getting old toys in. And so you can imagine my surprise and wonderment when a fellow brought me in his childhood collection in this matchbox case of toys. So this is probably like a late 1960s herbal tractor. It's still a really cool piece. There are people who collect tractors. But when I see a case like this, I start to get excited because it's right out of the 60s. So what can be inside? Let's crack it open and find out. Yes, of course, it is full of Matchbox toys. Look at that, there's a little Volkswagen camper van with the pop-up on it. Now, some of these are probably gonna need a little TLC, like he's gone on a few too many camping adventures with that guy. It's been painted many times. Um, some of them, he must have really liked the camping toys. There's lots that see a fair amount of use. Then you've got your Matchbox chargers. Um, there's a little ambulance, which is kind of neat. And there's, a, oh look, it's a Jag. It's my car that I pined over. This is a Jag day today. Maybe that means my Jag will be out of the paint shop soon and I'll be getting it back because uh, th the world seems to be telling me to think about my car. Oh, here's a cool one. That's a decent vehicle. It's too bad it's missing the wheels off the back. It does, however, have the barn doors on the side and those are always missing. So some of these might just be good for parts. Others, well, I should be able to mark um, price them right now and get them out on the shelf. Some are actually fairly new, like that Mustang. Some of these are a little bit on the newer side, but it's always cool to see the unusual things. This is, uh, is this Tamika? No, it's German made. Siku maybe? Tempo Matador bus. I've not had that one come through before, but how cute is that? It's even got little etched curtains on there. That would have been a slightly higher end toy of a really funny looking bus. Would love to see something like that driving down the road. Maybe not like that. It would have square tires, but, you know, to see something like that pass you by it would be pretty neat. And the little Matchbox station wagon still has the dogs in the back, looking out the back window. If you were ever a kid, back in the 60s or 70s, you, remember, you might remember that there was a uh, rear-facing seat, and you could sit there and look out the window backwards, and when you got motion sickness, you could just roll down the window and hurl out the back um, as your dad drove through the mountains or wherever you're headed. So a fun little collection. Um, I will get these guys priced and sorted and put out. And hopefully there's a couple in here that are a little bit better than others. That's, uh, the, that's the fun of getting collections in. You just got to sort through them and pick out what you want and the rest goes out on the shelf. Well, that is it. Another day done. Um, thank you to all those who sent us mystery packages. It was fun to go through. Uh, really glad that we got the sewer lines in the right place. It appears to be in the right place <laughs> and the water lines. But now it's just a matter of uh, waiting until our concrete pad, our, um, our cement guy comes through for us and gets that pad poured. Well, everything is moving ahead just as we would hope. So thank you for watching another episode today, guys. Um, more episodes to come as life progresses, things move ahead and exciting things to happen. Um, always looking forward to what's next and around the corner. So thank you again for watching, guys. We'll see you all soon and bye for now.